Okay, so you're in the market for a new camera or your first camera. Let me help you decide which one to get. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Now before this video starts, I hate to break it to you, but there's no perfect camera that can do it all in the market. I'm sure some of you guys know that, but the good thing about the cameras is you usually don't need it to do everything. You need it for a specific reason. So today I'm gonna walk through all the reasons you might need one and all my recommendations for what things you should be looking for in a camera. And I even throw in a couple recommendations. Now note, I do not go into specifics about camera. I throw up names and you're gonna have to do the research yourself, figuring out if it's a good fit for you, but certain cameras do work better for certain tasks that you're trying to do. So let's get into it. Number one thing to think about, what is your camera mainly going to be for? Are you doing YouTube? Are you trying to get memories of your kids? Are you trying to take banging Instagram photos? Are you going into professional videography or professional photography? Think about what that main task you're going to be doing and what are the features you want in that camera? If you want to do more than one, for example, Instagram and YouTube, which one are you going to be doing more of? Because the thing is most cameras can do it all. It's just inconvenient. For example, your iPhone can take Instagram photos. It can make YouTube videos for you. It's really convenient for Instagram, but it's not as convenient for YouTube where you have to find a good editor or you have to edit on your computer. You have to transfer files from your phone, which involves uploading to the cloud, downloading off the computer. It's complicated. Meanwhile, Instagram, the app's already on there. You take a photo, you can you have all the editing apps on here and then you can just post it. So think about that main thing you're gonna be doing and that's what you wanna look for. And then all the side things you can be doing, you can still get them done with your camera. Okay, number one, YouTube. What are you looking for? First of all, YouTube only supports 1080p footage. It does support 4K, but the problem is most people don't even have 4K monitors to display your video on. So I think that 1080p will suffice perfectly and it'll save you a lot of money. And I find there's two different types of YouTubers. We have the vlogger, which really needs a light camera, something that's really quick, easy to use, can fit in your bag, and is not super heavy and bulky, and it's a really good run and gun camera. Meanwhile, you have your gamers, you got your makeup tutorial people, you got your people that are more gonna have a camera on a tripod. These people will really appreciate of a bit higher quality, they can take a bulky your camera because it's mainly going to be on a tripod. So for a vlogger, Cameron's I would recommend. Sony has a good A600 series, which is a super light camera. I believe it's a detachable lens, but it's quick, light, can fit in your pocket, records great video. And also Canon has the new M50. I'm not sure if it's new anymore. A lot of YouTubers I see using this one. It's pretty much a duplicate of the A600 series. So those are two cameras I recommend. Check them out. As far as at home video goes, I would recommend something along the, the Canon Rebel series. They have the T7 that just came out. This was actually the first camera I used. 1080p footage is super clean. It's a DSLR, so it's a little bulkier, but you can get multiple different lenses and you can change all those around. And then Nikon also has their starter camera series, which is the D3500, I believe. All the camera links, by the way, are gonna be in the description below if you wanna check them out. Pretty much it's a duplicate of the Canon one. So if you like Nikon better or Canon, they both shoot 1080p and they also work well for photography. So if you wanna get those good thumbnails, it works perfect. All those cameras do that perfectly. Moving on to Instagram. Now, if you're an Instagrammer, you really wanna make sure you have those photography features. And another feature you wanna make sure you have is those Wi-Fi features. You don't really need anything more than 20 megapixels because the thing is Instagram's gonna compress your image anyway. And you want a camera with Wi-Fi functionality. So those two last cameras that I mentioned, the Nikon D3500 and the Canon Rebel series, Canon T7, T6, all of those take great photos. These were the first cameras I ever used. But if you're taking Instagram photos where it's really gonna make a difference is the lenses. I would just invest in a cheap camera body and always look for those lenses because that's where you're gonna be able to get a lot sharper of an image. So if you're in Instagram, look for a nice lens with a nice aperture. The one I'm shooting on right now is the 18 to 35 Sigma lens. It's about a thousand dollars, so it will run you a bit. As you can see here, it creates amazing depth in the background. And these are some of the photos I was able to capture with this from my Instagram. Next we have, if you're gonna wanna just be taking memories of your kids, don't even watch this video. Your phone is perfect for this. Honestly, this was such an old thing that people did where they bought a camera just to get memories of their kids. And this is because the phone te technology didn't have that. So honestly, if you're just taking memories of your kids, just go with your phone if that's what you're looking for. All you're doing is pretty much documenting your day-to-day -day life. Always have your phone on you so you can always, you know, pull it out, quit, record a quick, you know, little golfing with the buddies. Just go with the phone. Don't waste your money on a camera. That's my recommendation. Finally, are you going into professional photo and 
and video. Let's start on the photo side. If you're going into photography for the first time, I would recommend, again, one of the three starter series from any of the camera companies I mentioned. So we got the D3500 from Nikon, we got the Rebel series from Canon, and we got A6000 series from Sony. But if you really wanna step up your game through a camera body, I'm sorry, photographers, yes, megapixel count is important, but your lens is what's really gonna make an image sharp. So I wanna make sure you guys are investing in glass before you're investing in to buy a new camera. It's because glass is really what's gonna enable you to do all sorts of photography. If you're an animal photographer and you don't have a 70 to 200 mil, you're not an animal photographer. It's impossible. No matter what camera body you're running, if you don't have that glass, then you're not gonna be able to take that photo. So always invest in glass first. But if it's time to step up your camera game, then the camera I'm shooting on that has stepped up my photography game is the USR. The main thing with photography for when you're going from an entry level to a bigger level is always look for that full frame capability. This will make your images use the full sensor, a way bigger sensor, a lot more detail in your images. Just make sure you're looking for that good sensor. We got the Sony A7 series is great as well. They're really destroying the game right now. If you're going into video, this is where the body is a lot more important. I find that your camera body is gonna make a lot more difference in video because this is where it's really gonna show how good your sensor is. Professional videographers or people who are trying to step up their video game, they're doing real estate deals, they're doing wedding deals. You wanna make sure you have 4K. 4K is gonna make a difference here because the fact that even if you are exporting your video in 1080p, having a 4K file downsizing to 1080 is gonna be a lot more detailed than 1080 into 1080. Also, your camera body is gonna decide your ISO and how much ISO can you push before you get grainy. Sony's have been killing it with their low light. So A7, again, the EOS R. We got the EOS R5 now, A7 Mark II, A7 Mark III. All these cameras have been killing it. They shoot 4K. I've been able to shoot a lot of professional projects on my EOS R. I know plenty of people have. You wanna make sure you're looking for that 4K and a sensor that can shoot in low light. This is what's really gonna make the difference for your professional videography. Editing DAX here. I also forgot to mention if your camera can shoot log, that helps a lot with the color grading process because then you have a lot more option to make your footage look beautiful through color grading because it's a neutral profile. So you're gonna have a lot more dynamic range. Back to you. But again, don't neglect the lenses. The lenses are really gonna be able to enable you to pull different emotion from your shots. People always think about the camera first, camera, 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 but honestly, lens should always be superior to camera no matter what even if you're still shooting 1080p doing professional deals if you shoot on a good lens then your footage is going to look sick compared to if you have a bad lens and you have a sick camera then down the drain so yeah the point of this video was not about what camera exactly you should buy but think about the features you want in a camera you're gonna get never gonna find that perfect camera so always be thinking what do i need examples you're a youtuber you're gonna want a flip screen so you can see yourself and what you're doing because there's usually not going to be somewhere in there to help you record. You're an Instagrammer. You might want Wi-Fi functionality so you can download the photos directly from the camera onto your phone to instantly post or edit and get up there. Final tip what I would recommend you do, go through your process with the phone. Example, you're a YouTuber. Use your phone, record a whole YouTube video and think during that whole process, what features would make my creative workflow, would make my workflow so much easier. For example, that uploading thing I was talking about, recording on your phone, uploading to the computer so you can edit. There's plenty of cameras where you can plug directly into the camera. It'll instantly feed the data into the computer so you don't have to do that whole transfer thing. It's already there and it's already ready to edit. This is actually what I'm doing right now, which is funny. So yeah, question of the day for you guys. I want to ask you, why are you buying a camera? What are you going to be starting? A YouTube channel trying to get up your Instagram game, um, upping your professional photography and videography, trying to get more gigs. Let me know in the comments below. I love you guys all. Subscribe, like, comment. My name is Vin Dax for like creators. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care.